Hi, this is Thomas. Welcome back. We're looking at partial fractions case 1. Our example at the top center of the screen is 6x squared plus 5x minus 2 over x times quantity x minus 1 times quantity 2x plus 1. Notice in the upper left hand corner of the screen I've provided an algorithm. This is the step-by-step -step process you work through every time you're evaluating a case 1 partial fractions problem. Step 1, split denominator into fractions A, B, and possibly C. In this case, because we have three linear factors in the denominator, we will have a C. So let's begin with the expression we're given. 6x squared plus 5x minus 2 over x times x minus 1 times 2x plus 1 and we're going to create an identity. This isn't an equation. This isn't true for one or limited x values. This is true for all x values. So what is true? We're splitting our denominator into fractions a over the first factor, x, plus b over the second factor, x minus 1, plus c over the third factor, 2x plus 1. Step 2 is combine to one fraction. And we'll use algebra to turn the right side of the identity into one fraction, which will be x times quantity x minus 1 times quantity 2x plus 1, as we see in the original expression, but the numerator is going to change. Notice that a is divided by x. We want to divide by x and x minus 1 and 2x plus 1. So we need to multiply a by the remaining two factors, a times x minus 1 times 2x plus 1, plus b similarly. b is divided by x minus 1, so we will multiply by the other two factors, b times x times 2x plus 1, and then the same with c. Plus c, c is divided by 2x plus 1. We'll multiply by the other two factors, c times x times x minus 1. Step 3, create identity of numerators. Again, the identity is the idea that the relationship works for all x values. So our identity of numerators is, and let me go up and label each of these steps as well. Step 1, step 2, now on step 3, 6x squared plus 5x minus 2, that's the left hand side numerator. The identity relationship is with a times x minus 1 times 2x plus 1 plus b times x times 2x plus 1 plus c times x times x minus 1. Step 4, solve for a, b, and, if necessary, as is in this case, c, with zeros. So in step 4, what I want to do is I want to, by inspection, evaluate the right side of the identity to determine which x inputs will simplify the expression so that I can solve for one value at a time, a, then b, then c. Notice that if I look at the b and c terms, both are multiplied by an x. So if I choose x to be 0, and I can choose x to be anything I want because this identity is true for all x's, then I'm going to input into this expression the value of 0 everywhere I have an x. So 6x squared becomes 6 times 0 squared, which is 0. And 5x becomes 5 times 0, which is 0. Negative 2 remains the same. Now we have an equation, so I'm going to use the equal sign. a times x minus 1, x being 0, is a times negative 1 times 2x plus 1, again with x being 0, this will be times 1, plus 
the B term will be zero. When we input zero in place of X, that entire expression will be multiplied by zero plus zero, and the same holds for the C term. We're multiplying in the C term by X. When we input a zero for that X, the entire term will become zero. And now we can simplify to negative two equals negative A, and A equals two. Continuing with step four on the right side of the screen, and continuing to use for step four, the identity we've created in step three. We now want to identify what X input can help us to isolate B. Now comparing A and C, notice that both A and C are multiplied by X minus one. If we set X to be one, then when we input X into our three expressions, the A and C expressions will disappear. So on the left side of the identity, 6x squared will become 6 times 1 squared, which is 6, plus 5x, 5 times 1, plus 5, minus 2, again moving from an identity to an equation, equals, we know the a term is going to disappear. As soon as we input the x value of 1, a times 1 minus 1 is a times 0, and the remaining component of that term is irrelevant. That a term will simply disappear or become 0. Plus b times x, x is now 1, times 2x plus 1, 2 times 1, replacing the x with 1, 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. And again, the c term is going to become 0 because of the x minus 1 factor. When we input the 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and the c term disappears. So now we can simplify the left side of the equation. 6 plus 5 minus 2 is 9, equals b times 1 times 3 is 3b. And we have simplifying b equals 3. And continuing with step 4, now evaluating for C. Looking at the A term and the B term, both have a common factor of 2x plus 1. An x value of negative 1 half will zero out both of those terms. So we'll use x equals negative 1 half. On the left side of the expression, 6x squared. 6 times negative 1 half squared. Negative 1 half squared is 1 over 4. We end up with 6 over 4. 5 times negative 1 half is negative 5 over 2. Minus 2 equals the a term becomes 0. Notice that when we input the x value of negative 1 half into 2x plus 1, that results in a 0, thus the A term disappears. Plus, same with the B term, the B term also has a factor of 2x plus 1, thus with the input of x equals negative 1 half, that term becomes 0. Plus, C times negative 1 half times x minus 1. Negative 1 half minus 1 is negative 3 over 2. The left side of the equation simplifies to 3. The right side of the equation simplifies to C times 3 over 4. And C, with some algebra, equals negative 4. So now we have values for A, B, and C. We're done with step 4. We can move to our final step, step 5, right solution. 6x squared plus 5x minus 2 over x times quantity x minus 1 times quantity 2x plus 1 is an identity with a we've solved for as 2. 2 over x plus b we've solved for as 3. 3 over x minus 1 and C we've solved for as negative 4, thus minus 4 over 2x 
plus 1. We've arrived at our solution, and this concludes our analysis of partial fractions case 1.